a science question that's kind of funny, but it's a very good question. So it says, my science teacher today was talking about the origin of nipples in regards to fetuses. It is true, is it true that the reason everyone has nipples is because all babies in the womb start out as a female? Yeah, it is true that all babies in the womb start out uh, identical. Males and females start out identical, I guess I would say. Uh, and so there's no distinction. Um, yeah, so men having nipples is one of these really interesting things, right? Uh, there's no specific purpose for male nipples, and so that sort of leads us to feel like um, so, so I think in, in biology, there's a couple ways we might try to explain this. If we, if we look at an animal and we see a structure on that animal that doesn't quite make sense or, or doesn't seem to have a use, um, we tend to, to think about, okay, well, what might have been its use in the past? Maybe there was a past where uh, uh, there was a, a, a use. Uh, an example of this would be the human appendix. So you guys may know we have a little sac-like organ. Uh, inside of our bodies called the appendix, um, and that largely the appendix is considered to be um, uh, non-useful, to, to have no real function in the body. Um, it's believed that the appendix, uh, historically or, or, or a long time ago, that appendixes in, in early humans or proto-humans would have been larger and would have been a storage space for uh, a lot of different kinds of bacteria that would have helped to digest certain kinds of foods that might have been harder for early man to digest. So, for example, um, there's lots of different chemicals in plants that we have a hard time as humans digesting. Uh, we tend to cook the plants that we eat or eat plants that uh, are easier for our systems to digest. But as a human, I can't just go walk out in the forest and eat any leaves that I want or munch on any grass that I want. A lot of that stuff would be difficult to digest. Uh, however, in the past, uh, uh, there were humans that, that probably did have an ability to digest these things thanks to additional bacteria from the appendix. And the notion goes that today we have these small remnant appendixes that might even still contribute some positive bacteria and play a small role in our digestive system, but which are largely obsolete. Um, but then thinking back about male nipples, that's not really the case. There was an argument, I think there is an argument that's been made, maybe there are some people that still defend it, that maybe there was a time when uh, males did nurse babies uh, or something like that. Um, and that has never been proven. There's no, there's no real reason to believe that, but that's just an idea that was thrown out there. Um, it's, it is interesting, though, that you have males that develop, and they develop with these additional structures. You know, at, in development, that's going to be additional energy uh, for, for a mother to, to have a baby that's developing a structure that they don't need. So it kind of is a bit of a mystery. Um, I thought I'd also just show. Um, we could take a look really quickly at my screen. So I've just got a, a breakdown that shows the anatomy of a male breast. And actually, let me flip over and let's just look at the, si look at the side view of a female breast. So one of the important things that you see besides uh, muscle tissue down beneath and then adipose tissue, which kind of creates uh, a cushioning layer, um, what you see here are um, these lobules and ducts, which serve as um, the pathway for um, um, you know, a mother's milk to travel. Uh, to the nipple so that the baby can, can drink it. And really interestingly, if you look at this um, diagram of a, uh, uh, the anatomy of a male breast, uh, and you can't see it perfectly here, but you can see the label here indicates that there are ducts still. It's, it's something that uh, is kind of funny. Male uh, uh, nipples do have ducts, as if they could conduct uh, some sort of a fluid in that direction. And so I just wanted to uh, lastly point out that um, uh, all humans, male and female, we have the same uh, 23 chromosomes with, with this one exception. So the, uh, we, have, we have 23 pairs of chromosomes as, as humans. So 46 total chromosomes, 23 pairs. Um, and in any given one of us, those pairs are essentially identical. Like Nate and I are very different people. We look very different. But our first pair of chromosomes um, contain the same set of genes. So like if there's a gene in there, let's say, that codes for eye color, um, Nate and I both have those genes that code for eye color, but they might code differently. I have blue eyes and Nate has brown eyes. Um, but uh, looking here at the 23rd pair, um, you can see that, that females have two X chromosomes and males have one X and one Y chromosome. And it's actually the Y chromosome that ha contains all of the genetic information that differentiates a, a male from a female. 
And so in the development of humans, one of the things that we know is that uh, up until about day 60 in the development of the embryo or of the fetus, uh, the, the genetic material from the Y chromosome is not referenced. And so there isn't um, any development from the male side up until day 60. And we know that at that point, then we start to see the development of male genitals as opposed to female genitals. But even before that time, the development of the breast starts. Um, and so that's, that's the reason that um, males have nipples uh, when females do not. Just as a side note, um, even though uh, uh, male fe fetuses start to differentiate themselves from female fetuses at about uh, day 60, um, doctors are unable to tell the sex of a baby until like, I, I don't know the exact time, but it's, it's further than that. It's something like five months, four months, five months. Um, and they're able to do it by looking at the angle between the spinal cord and the, the, the genitalia of the, the fetus. So there's a different angle depending on whether we're talking about uh, a female genitalia or male genitalia. And if the baby is oriented correctly, a doctor can use an, uh, an ultrasound to determine whether we're looking at a male or female baby. Um, but the differentiation actually starts before that time. That's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of stuff I didn't know. Oh yeah, lots of good stuff. Okay. Male nipples.